Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now, let's talk through the scenario. So within a, say, a supply chain uh, or within sort of operations, within, within any uh, business that, uh, that sells some goods, it has to obviously buy goods in or make goods. And then obviously there's a sales cycle where someone might order it, then we might ship it, and then it might be delivered. So there's a, there's a logistical uh, piece of analysis that needs to be done there across time. And what you might find in your data is that you have multiple dates. And so when you come across this in Power BI, especially if you're just starting out or you're just trying to learn how to use Power BI effectively, oftentimes you get very confused as to how to organize your model around these multiple dates to actually extract meaningful insights. And so when I look at data like this, I, I say, well, what, what, you know, I immediately think, well, what kind of insights could we showcase here? And the main ones to me could be like, would be like things uh, from a supply chain perspective would be how long does it take for us to, from when we procure something to when we actually sell it from, you know, so we've got a procured date and an order date. So, so what's the average time that it takes for us to sell something or what is the value that we have in our inventory over, over that period of time, right? Because from an inventory management perspective, so procured date might be, well, I mean, you probably, you might, you might even procure it and then it might take a while to actually ship to you. But uh, yeah, if we were just to take this procure date as the day that we actually got the stock made or, or delivered, uh, and between, and between, and from here to ship date, well, that's going to give you some insight. So how much, how much inventory do we have sort of in our warehouses at any one time? Uh, and, you know, could you optimize that over different time periods? Then we also could have, well, how much inventory do we have between what's been ordered but, uh, before to, to, its be, to its delivery date? So how much is in transition? And so some more good insights there as well, right? Now, the key here is how do we manage that? How do we get to these insights? And it's a combination of a, of a model, the right modeling techniques, and also the right formula techniques. It's very difficult to do one, uh, to get the results you want with only one of those things right. Now, the way that I have done it here, and I, and I highly recommend doing it this way, I've, I've gone between a couple of different techniques over time of how to do this, and I have always now landed back on you always just want to keep things simple with one date table, in my view. And if you want those sort of insights um, across time, across those different dates, or managing across different dates, what you want to do is you want to create inactive relationships down to your fact table. And you can create multiple of these. So if you have a lot of dates, like a lot of key dates, then you want to create a lot of inactive relationships. Now, all of these inactive relationships all go back to, if I just highlight them, they all go back to in my date table. Obviously, you've got to have a date table. That's a, that's a non-negotiable. They all go back to my date column here, right? Now, once you do it like this, you'll realize that you know, obviously the, the, it's, it's obviously quite simple to do. You can just default to going to inactive relationships, but then it's what sort of formula technique do you use after that to actually get the insight? But what we did was we obviously, we started off by building out our core measures. So that's what I always put in my key measures folder here. And uh, so I've been able to look at, say, my quantity sold, my revenues, profits, transactions, costs, etc. Now, the key to actually look at insights over time, though, is utilizing a technique called events in progress. It's a, for, it's a combination of formulas, it's a combination of DAX formulas, which enables you to get to that insight. And this is it here, okay? Now, this technique is very reusable, okay? What it does is it enables us to, on any day, basically see what is considered open on that day so if on any particular day in this particular so i'm just going along so we're looking at inventory in progress here right and this is broken up by warehouse in this particular case on any particular day here we are looking to see if there are any orders which have an order date less than the current date and a ship date greater than the current date and when i say the current date it's the actual date here so in this particular case, 12th of the 5th, 2019. Okay. And this is what we're saying is, 
uh, the amount of inventory which has been ordered but is on its way to be shipped out. And so we need to we need to actually have this inventory available in the in the right warehouse so that we can then ship it out to the right location or deliver it to the right location. So we need to be optimizing our inventory in the right locations geographically so that we uh, don't have to ship something from one location to another to then get delivered, right? So this is all about supply chain optimization. Uh, and so this is the sort of insight that enables you to, to be able to get that, right? To be able to see, well, do we have enough supplies in our warehouse to actually make up the deliveries that have happened, the orders that have, that have happened, say, online or through our, um, through our sales network? Okay. And then you'll see here that a lot of these sort of formula combinations, these formula patterns, they're all the same, okay? And you need to use these in combination with that model. And if you don't have inactive relationships, then this particular formula will not work. Some of you might be thinking, well, how do, how do you actually isolate, say you wanted to look at, say you wanted to look at, uh, say, the revenue by order date, right? You actually wanted to see the revenue by order date. Because you've created these inactive relationships, you have to be able to turn them on in any instance where you want to actually look at something by a particular date. Because the context of date will not automatically work through any of these inactive relationships unless we turn them on. And you can do this very simply using a, the use relationship function. So I'll just show you uh, what, that, what that looks like here. Um, have I done that? Oh, date measures up here. So revenue by order date, right? And so all I've done up here is I've gone calculate. And with the user relationship, you basically, the way to think about this is you're turning on an inactive relationship by using this. And so I'm just joining up virtually the date column in the date table and the order date column in the sales table. And that's what enables me to then actually look at revenue by, by any particular date that we want to look at it by. And so I'm just going to change this up. Change this into a table, get rid of the hierarchy, and then turn that into a visualization. So this is now me looking at revenue by, by a particular date, even though it's not going to happen naturally because of these inactive relationships. And then obviously this is always, this is dynamic, right? So say I want to have a look at a particular warehouse, and I can see here, well, how much inventory do we have in, um, open at any one time? Right, that and remember inventory that is been ordered and needs to be shipped at any one time, and so this number could could dramatically change over time depending on what season we're in, for example. And that's another good thing. You know, you, 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 this this is probably not a static number, right? It's not a not a not an even number. It's going to have it's going to ebb and flow, and that's where time intelligence can come in um, really effectively as well. Uh, built on top of this technique, we can branch out into time intelligence techniques. Um, but that's for another video. I just wanted to show in this one, really highlight the technique around how you manage this. You know, it's, it's, it's perfect for a, su a pl supply chain demo operational type um, analysis. Um, but, you know, obviously it's, it can be used in many different scenarios where you have multiple dates. So it's not just isolated to this particular scenario at all. Um, any, any, any range of different date type analysis could, could really benefit from, from utilizing this technique. All the best. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.